In the Groudon video, I did kind of a throwaway line for a Rayquaza run, and the amount of comments was nearly overwhelming, so today we'll be taking a look at the Sky High Pokemon in a solo run of Red and Blue. The links to the disassembly are in the description if you want to know the tools that I used to make the ROM, and outside of that, let's cover the basics first. Rayquaza is a dragon and flying type, and the dragon part of things is really good against most of the game, while the flying type, it's a detriment like it always is. This means the main antagonist of the run is going to be Lorelei since we have that glaring double weakness to ice. As for the stats, this is one of the few Pokemon we've seen that actually tie Mewtwo and base stat total, but even with 150 base special, it just doesn't beat the genetic freak there, but it does also sport a 150 attack stat, which makes the options for Rayquaza run pretty deep. You just have a lot of choices with what you can do in the run. As for the moves, I have added four today, and I went with the Generation 9 learn set as a base, but you can see that it doesn't really translate too well to Generation 1, and that's the reason for the extra moves. I replaced some of the standard normal moves over things like Crunch, Extreme Speed, and Hyper Voice, and since I'm not going to go over level 60 anyway, I just didn't bother looking at things like Hurricane and Outrage. Our first move is Twister. Its base power isn't great, but since Dragon is a special type in Gen 1, it really helps the early game. And then you have Air Slash. It's finally a solid flying move in Generation 1, but it doesn't have 100% accuracy, and it's worth noting that both of these moves carry a 30% chance to flinch as a nice little bonus. Ancient Power is a move that I didn't have the tech for in the Groudon video, I talked about it there, but it's fully functional now. It has an Omni Boost side effect, which means it will boost our attack, defense, special, and speed by one stage on a 10% proc rate. It does sound really powerful, and it is, but you just, it never happens. The final move I'm going to be adding is Dragon Dance. It's fairly straightforward, it boosts your attack and speed by one stage, and we'll go into more detail a little bit later because we just don't start with it. As for the TMs, you'll pretty much have to squint your eyes to even see all the things that Rayquaza can learn. It learns pretty much everything and all you really need to know in terms of Generation 1 is that it gets the relevant things like Body Slam, Rock Slide, Swords Dance, Earthquake, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Blizzard. That's just to name a few. That's the heavy hitters. And with that, let me just say that likes and comments go a long way. Now whether you're someone new, maybe you're someone who just doesn't normally think about that sort of thing, or maybe you're a returning subscriber like Sam Eckert, I want to gauge your interest on a redo of Kyogre. I did one back in December using the Sanqui tool and it's definitely, it leaves a lot to be desired. It's not as strong as it could have been. So comment below if Shrek needs to make a return or hit that like to really let me know. Now you guys killed it for the Iron Thorns video that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. And 500 more likes would be phenomenal to see again. But today I'll settle for 400 and if you guys want to see Kyogre, it might be a few months for that one since I have a lot planned but it will eventually happen but with that out of the way let's stop talking sit back relax grab yourself a sodi pop and i think we can just kick this one off overall the start of the game it's not that interesting uh we keep it pretty minimal here but for rayquaza going into this one i just had the very high hopes of just really keeping this run to as minimalist as possible doing the least amount of things i can and hoping to get like a really elite time because if you remember groudon had a two hour ten minute time and it was my goal to really try to beat that and we'll kind of see some of the decisions I made to see if we can get kind of close to that. There's no need to do any extra battles early. I take on the one mandatory bug catcher. You could take them all on. You have ancient power and air slash for super effective damage so they wouldn't really be much of a threat anyway but just I want to do things as fast as possible and I go straight to Brock. This one isn't as simple as you might think on the surface. Twister is a pretty weak move, but it is special. And both of Brock's Pokemon have pretty weak special, and you don't want to go for resisted moves. It could just take a long time. So in order to get through this at the bare minimum, it really helps a lot. In other iterations of the ROM, I really didn't care about going for Twister, but it just helped out this early game so much because we had a glaring weakness, mainly against Rock types, and they do pop up from time to time, especially as you're going towards that mid game. Now there is one problem 
that this fight has, and I did lose this fight when I was just initially practicing the run, and it all has to do with Onyx. Now, you don't outspeed Onyx, that's a problem, because if he uses Bide, you can try to outpace it with Twister, but you just risk that chance that you're gonna get hit with Bide damage and just go down. Now, what I do here is go for Ancient Power or just some resisted move when it starts to use Bide, and here on the Ancient Power, we hit the Omni Boost. You can see the attack, the defense, the special, and the speed boost. It's really good, but spoiler alert, this is the pretty much the only time you're gonna see the boost in the whole video. But this one goes pretty good, considering that Onyx doubles our level, we make it through, and I guess the only thing to really emphasize here is that Twister was really key to getting past this fight. I don't think Rayquaza would have been that good unless you put something like Twister on its learn set. Now let's just keep this run moving, and this one's probably gonna be pretty quick because we do try to keep this run to a minimalist track. I was really kind of pushing the limits of what you could do in a solo run, something more akin to like Mewtwo or something like that. But I would like to quickly bring up Dragon Ascent. Now if you've caught some streams or you've just interacted with me in the comments, you know that I've been trying to implement Dragon Ascent for this run and I just can't do it. The long and the short of it, without being too complicated, is that lowering your own stats is just not something that exists in Gen 1. You'd have to basically, the only person, I found one person that attempted it and they pretty much copied over Generation 2's code, which means you'd have to retool the engine just a little bit, and it gets a little bit too muddy, a little bit too complicated for me to do, but at the end of the day, I just thought it would be cool to see you lowering your own stats to activate the badge boost. I thought it would be very Generation 1, but we don't have it today, and I just thought I would at least bring it up. Maybe one day, there'll be some breakthroughs and we can get that kind of stuff to work, but as for now, I just simply don't have the time. I'd rather pour the energy into making videos rather than spend a couple of months trying to make a single move that really doesn't matter a whole lot. But we can just keep it moving. As for Mount Moon, everything leading up to it all the way up to Cerulean, we're on the bare minimum track. And since we're in the slow leveling group, that's not really too great when you make it to Cerulean. And even though we're a really low level, it's usually a pretty big detriment. We actually have options here because we outspeed the Pidgeotto on rival number two but the ranges, they didn't look that good. So when we retooled and we optimized, I'm actually gonna take on Misty first. And the reason why I would do this is because Dragon type resists water, and that means Misty's AI will only let her Pokemon use Tackle. It makes the fight a lot easier, and you can see that it's really not that bad. Now, high crit rate, there is some variable, there is a chance to lose, and I do get kinda low, but at the end of the day, I'm only level 14, and this fight alone gets me a couple of levels. But when you're a legend, and you have the high base stat total that like Rayquaza does, every single level you get just adds so many stats it has so much value. After the fight, we learned Bubble Beam. Now, Bubble Beam's not even listed on the sidebar. That's kind of how late I added it into the learn set. I remade the ROM way later, and it's because I needed it. And if you look at Rayquaza's learn set, it learns things like Surf, Hydro Pump, Waterfall, Rain Dance, and I took the artistic liberty. Sometimes you just gotta do that, guys. I figured if Rayquaza was back in Gen 1, it would definitely learn Bubble Beam. And if you think about it, Air Slash is our main source of damage. I want to be using that as much as possible. And what resists that? Rock. What do we have to use against Rock right now? Twister. Twister's pretty weak. Bubble Beam just kind of fills that niche very well, and it allows us to kind of cover our weaknesses for this early to mid game. As for rival number two, did I forget to heal, or was I really trying to push Rayquaza to its limits? I'll let you guys decide. Now here we get lucky. Ancient Power doesn't one-shot, but Pidgeotto goes for Gust. Now we're getting really low in health, but we don't take a Sand Attack, and we can move on. And from there, we move first, and we can one-shot the next two Pokemon. It's not too bad. Now, Squirtle does get a crack at us. I don't think there's any scenario where it would do 16 damage to Rayquaza, but it just goes for a lowly little Tail Whip, and we do make it past this challenge. And honestly, I don't think it saved any time by going straight to rival number two without healing. Now, originally, I kind of planned this out to where you're kind of at a certain level after you get done with Misty. You go ahead and take on rival number two. Then you heal after so you can comfortably make it through Nugget Bridge. I don't think it was a time save overall, but I am just always trying new stuff and I thought I'd mention it. But we heal, Nugget Bridge, it's insignificant. And the only thing I'll mention here is that when you have the choice, usually you'll fight the Machop Geodude trainer that's guarding the hidden elixir. Here, I decide to take on the single Onyx trainer. It's a one shot and overall, it's a little bit quicker. And these are just kind of some 
of the few little things I was trying to cut down. It got to the point where I was cutting out an elixir and stuff like that. So it's just worth pointing out. And after that, I think we could just skip all the way down to the SSN. And you obviously you can't cut out everything, but I do really need body slam here. It's a solid move. I don't need to really justify myself. But the main thing, since we're talking about cutting things out, and we're gonna kind of highlight what we did cut out, uh, the rare candy guarded by the gentleman. I just skip it because Rayquaza is just so strong. We'll see that at the end as we progress through the video. It just got to the point to where I just didn't need it. I was like, well, what level can I beat the game at? And I started going backwards from there. Now let's look at rival number three. And you might have noticed that I didn't learn Body Slam. And I did that for one reason. I do need Ancient Power. It guarantees the one shot on the Pidgeotto. Whereas the Body Slam doesn't just yet. And we just talked about how each level on a Legendary gives you so much value in terms of stats that this one is kind of a pushover but I will highlight one flaw in Rayquaza as we go forward we'll see more of this but if you think about runs like Groudon specifically or even runs like Articuno and Mewtwo the common thread there is that really early they get these really strong 130 plus effective power moves that can really just kind of roll over the game and Rayquaza it's kind of missing that Air Slash is a pretty good move but at the end of the day it just has 75 base power 112 when you adjust it for stab and there's just a few spots where it kind of leaves you lacking where you don't one shot something we have seen that on the war turtle and i know it's really early in the video but i do just i kind of want to just highlight that now because when i played this run about three or four times and i look back these are kind of the little things that i notice as for surge usually being a flying top would just be god awful here but we are half dragon so electric is neutral that means we could probably survive even like a crit thunderbolt from the Raichu, and I did teach Body Slam over Ancient Power. It's kind of sad that Ancient Power's kind of already lived its purpose, but it is what it is. We get past this one pretty quick, and then from there, especially since we have Bubble Beam, we could just skip all the way to Celadon because Rock Tunnel, it's not really worth showing. But real quick, I would just like to talk about Thunderbolt real quick. One of the best coverage moves, I would argue that it is the best. With 150 base special, you would think it'd be a no-brainer, but you gotta think, we learned Swords Dance later if we want to and we have dragon dance i haven't mentioned it yet i mentioned it in the intro raises your attack raises your speed and for this run i guess spoiler alert i end up going a full physical learn set here i've tested out both and if you just have moves that raise your attack the badge boost for a special increase just isn't as good as a stage increase that's what it all comes down to and i just thought i'd bring that up real quick as we get thunderbolt since it's usually so important to pretty much every run that can get it the first order of business in Celadon is to take on the Rocket Hideout. And here, there's another little minimalist strategy going on here. I'm not picking up any high money items. They really don't take that much time, but they do take time nonetheless. And I was really trying to refine this one. I guess I'm trying to hammer that point home. And outside of that, if you didn't have Bubble Beam, I mentioned that I added it kind of late in the ROM's development. It just makes things much smoother. If we only used Twister and we were still using that, we'd probably have to end up showing rock tunnel battles or even showing the Giovanni battle here but bubble beam it makes the rock and ground types trivial it helped out a lot uh, I'll say that one more time when we get done with the rocket hideout it's immediately straight to Erica now you probably couldn't ask for a better matchup here especially since we have air slash and today it's nothing but one shots even at level 28 this one was just kind of a no-brainer because it just gives you a little bit of extra money you can sell the mega drain TM and get even more and they're just pretty much allow us to get an extra vitamin and now we can just kind of take a look at shopping and there's really only two things to note here the first is that i grab me a nice little sodi pop on the top floor i give it to the little girl for rock slide and as far as vitamins go with erica's extra money i am able to squeeze out four proteins you don't need carbos because your speed's already great and i've already mentioned we're going for a physical move set so just increasing our power that just little bit more just helps out now we can move it on to pokemon tower there's not much to say here we are a higher level and rival number four is usually the most trivial of all the rival fights and it doesn't change here the main thing is i do have to look out for my air slash pp because like all the elite runs i'm trying not to heal that often and i just need it to make the ghastlies a one shot and this one's pretty easy but i do want you to notice that once again i just don't one shot the war turtle and that's about the only thing to say we can just kind of keep rolling along down to the safari zone and here i am cutting out items once again just like the rocket hideout the carbo 
glucose isn't useful. I'm going to outspeed everything anyway, but I do skip the protein. It would have been helpful, but at this point, my thought process was that I want to eliminate as many extra seconds that I could, and just going past the protein just felt like the better play, especially when the run didn't really suffer as a result from it. And now we're doing a pretty early Silphco. Uh, you know how I think it helps all the runs just to go ahead and get it out of the way. Now, unfortunately, I could not cut out the 10th floor. The rare candy is whatever. I probably could have cut it out, but the main thing is that you cannot have a physical learn set without Earthquake. There's no point. Why even bother? And the only other thing to note is that I do learn Rock Slide here before we take a look at rival number five. And this kind of marks a slight little change for Rayquaza. We're going to start to need Dragon Dance as this run progresses and the fights get more difficult. But you don't want to set up just yet. You don't want to risk a sand attack. Just use the Rock Slide on the Pidgeotto, get it out of there, and move on. Now Growlithe, he's the perfect little pathetic puppy to set up on. And we do, all we do is one for this fight. We want to outspeed the Alakazam and we want to put our ranges into guaranteed one shots for pretty much everything outside of the Blastoise. Now this fight's pretty clean. I do make a mistake. Mistake. I go for Bubble Beam instead of Rock Slide on the Growlithe and it cost me a turn, but it doesn't matter. I would like to just kind of talk about Dragon Dance real quick. Double effect moves, moves that do two things are not something that exists in Gen 1. It's something I had to make. So when you raise your attack stat, then raise your speed stat with the same move like Dragon Dance, if you're wondering, yes, it does badge boost you twice with one move. And if you're thinking all the way back to Ancient Power, yes, you get four badge boost from that one single move so it could be very powerful late game but dragon dance is a lot more reliable obviously the 10 percent chance on ancient power is not good but overall i wanted to bring that up real quick but that's rival number five down we can just kind of keep going Directly after rival number five, normally we're just skipping over seal for going straight into the other stuff, but today I need to cover something real quick, and it's really unique to Rayquaza. Notice I don't have Earthquake on my learn set yet, and why is that? It's because of this, this Rocket Grunt. We've never talked about the Rocket Grunt directly after rival number five, the one before Giovanni number two, but today he's going to have a, quite a little spotlight. It's because if you go into this fight with all physical moves, his Pokemon are just, they're really bulky defensively, and and it can just add two, three, four turns onto the battle and really slow it down to be pretty much longer than some Elite Four fight. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, Bubble Beam just makes this one trivial. Just three up, three down. You can just get past real quick. And then you might be thinking, well, if I need Bubble Beam here, Bubble Beam is probably also helpful on Giovanni number two. But you'd be wrong, my friend. You actually need to learn Earthquake directly after this battle before going into Giovanni number two. Now, we don't need to show Giovanni number two. We can skip ahead after that. And now, I think we could just keep it rolling, get it back on track, and we can look at Sabrina. You do need one Dragon Dance here. It's going to continue that trend that we started with rival number five, but don't set up on the Kadabra. It's a little bit too strong. Just take it out in one hit, set up on the Mr. Mom. Now, I do miss an Air Slash here on the Kadabra, and it's uh, something that we're not going to see too often. It has 95% accuracy, and that looks pretty good on paper, but trust me, guys, you miss so much more than you would think. I guess statistically, one out of every Every 20 times you use it, you will miss. But it just kind of adds up is what I'm trying to say. But after that, you set up one Dragon Dance. It allows you to outspeed the Alakazam. And the extra attack boost just lets you one-shot everything. There's not really much more to say here. Next up is Uncle Koga. And we held off on him, so we're even higher level. We could have taken this on even earlier. We have Earthquake. We have 150 base attack. You already know how this one's going to go. It's just a massacre. But we do get poison. And at the end of the fight, we do get to see at least some of the toughness from Quasa for once. It survives a self-destruct directly to the face, and we're still ticking. We get this badge. Speed badge boost, pretty important. Not that important for Rayquaza. Now we can move on to our weekly brisk swim down to Cinnabar. You kind of wish that these swims were a little bit more leisurely, a little bit more relaxed, but Rayquaza is on a mission today, and after pondering the age-old question about Tombstoner, brother! I think it's time to look at Blaine uh, real quick. I mean, you already know. Sometimes it's really hard to say that there's like a 0% risk of losing a fight, but here I'm very confident to say that you could never lose to Blaine, even if you missed every attack for about 15 straight turns. We have Earthquake, and this is going to be, out of all the major fights left, there's only seven battles left in the entire game. This is going to be one of the last ones that we don't have to set up any Dragon Dances on, and I think that's really all you need to know. 
Because when you take a look at Giovanni, even on Red and Blue Giovanni, I do set up one single Dragon Dance. That just means that it's gonna guarantee that I one-shot both of the Nidoking King and the Nidoking Queen, and it puts Rhydon in a guaranteed two-shot, so it just speeds up the battle just a little bit. And that's all of the badges down, just like that, Rayquaza, making it look pretty easy. Our time right now, pretty fantastic as well. And as far as rival number six goes, and this is gonna continue the trend, you'll notice the pattern that's emerging. When we get into tough fights, usually one Dragon Dance is enough to kind of let us take control. Now here, the sand attack threat from the Pidgeot is off the table. That means I will set up on it. We can pretty much handle everything. And the number two reason why you would choose Blastoise in the Rayquaza run, I know I haven't talked about it a whole lot, is that it's just really tanky. With one Dragon Dance, it's not a one shot, but it does put it at a guaranteed two shot range. And overall, this one's pretty quick. We can start kind of thinking ahead to the actual problematic parts of the run. After the battle, I do use every single one of my rare candies. I have nine of them. That will get us up to level 52. And if you're wondering why I use them now, it's because if I was the level that I was, I would have a chance to encounter wild Pokemon through the repel inside of Victory Road. And that's very annoying. And it did cost me a lot of time in some of my practice runs. And now my friends, we can talk about the elephant in the room, but we are double weak to ice. And we've seen Lorelei absolutely murder some of the runs in the past. But I guess you've noticed that I skipped rare candies. I'm only level 52. I haven't done any extra training. You might think that I have a plan and I do. And without further ado, I think we could just kind of dive into the Elite Four and let's see how Rayquaza handles itself. And you might be thinking that I'm just gonna abuse Lorelai's AI like I did in the Farfetch video, and you'd be wrong. Here, I set up the Dragon Dance turn one, and you can see that we tank an Aurora Beam pretty well with our high base special, especially when you consider that we're double weak to it. Now from there, I really don't care if it uses Aurora Beam again, because all I need is one more Dragon Dance, and we're set up, ready to go. It does go for rest, and I guess that's great because we save a little bit of health, but it really wasn't needed, and at this point, we can kind of start the sweep. We can use the rock slide and move on to the cloister. That's generally the problem. With two dragon dances set up, you have roughly about a 78% chance to one hit the cloister. And I went with those odds because you don't want to tank too many Aurora Beams from the Dugong. And here I miss the range, but I get pretty lucky. It triggers a retroactive super potion. That means I get two straight turns and I can knock it out right after that. Next up, Slowbro, doesn't matter. I knock it out quick. And the same goes for the Jinx. And as for the Lapras, it's a guaranteed one shot with the two dragon dances, but I crit and it barely hangs on. Blizzard would probably make it to where Rayquaza couldn't walk for a few days, but once again, I trigger a retroactive super potion, and that means we're moving on. No resets, very first try, and I gotta say, I gotta admit, it looked pretty dominant from where I was sitting. Next up, I got a little bit of a surprise for you guys. We're walking up to Bruno, and I'm not talking, this battle's not hard. Uh, what you noticed is that Bruno has been replaced to Today. If you've been watching my Generation 2 runs, you know that I love Hiker Anthony, and today Hiker Anthony has taken Bruno's plays. Unfortunately, he does have the same team. I don't want to change too much, but I thought it was pretty funny. This might continue for all of my cross-gen runs, just because we always goof and gaff on Bruno. But overall, I set up one Dragon Dance here just to ensure the Earthquakes can one-shot the, the Onyxes with their high defense. Then I have Air Slash for the Fighters. It's a done deal. Hiker Anthony, not too much better than Bruno. Now, earlier, I I said only a couple of the fights left in the game don't require you to set up Dragon Dance, and you'd probably not guess that Agatha is going to be one of those fights. Now this fight's just trivial, with such high base attack, with access to Earthquake, with access to Rock Slide, you simply just don't need it. This one's just one shot city, and we can just move on just like that. Very quick, very easy. That's just the way I like my Agatha fights. And as far as Lance goes, you might think maybe a Hyper Beam crit from the Gyarados might be an issue, but since we're Dragon type and it has Dragon Rage, it'll only go for it. Now, two Dragon Dance here. I feel like I've probably said Swords Dance at least once in the video. Hopefully I haven't. I feel like I always want to say Swords Dance, but that's not the point. You set up one here. You could set up two. It would make the Dragonite 100% guaranteed one shot with the Rock Slide, but I don't really care about that. We set up once. We go on the sweep. Now, on the Dragonite, we just talked about it. It does stall a little bit. I don't one shot it. It gets a Hyper Potion. I don't one shot it again. It gets off another move. Then it takes another move after that. So it stalled a little bit. Overall, it wasted a little bit of time. But Lance, that's really all there is to say about it. Over 
overall, the champion fight reminds me a lot of Groudon's champion fight. And this is the one fight where it needed to actually fully set up the swords dance. And it's very similar for Rayquaza here. I actually need to set up three dragon dance. And while we could set up three more, there's just no point. It gets a little scary because the Pidgeot starts to mirror move some of the dragon dance. And while it does get a crit wing attack off on me, and it actually makes me bleed just a little bit, it's too little too late. And I'm kind of ready just to go ahead and start the sweep. Now at that point, we're really fast. Nothing's going to outspeed us. We have very high attack and we just go on a one shotting spree. We have answers for pretty much everything. Now, I guess looking ahead, maybe something like if you miss the range on the executor, if you try to set up just one dragon dance, you miss the range or you miss an air slash, you could get put to sleep. It could stall out the fight a little bit. But outside of that, there's only one problem and there's only one reason why you set up three dragon dance and that's to guarantee the one shot on the blast toys because if it gets a blizzard off, it does a ton of damage. Damage. So the whole goal, the whole reason why you would set up extra on this fight is just to avoid any risk of maybe like a blizzard crit if you're at full health or if you've taken some damage to the fight, the blizzard just outright killing you on its own and we don't want that. And at the end of the day, it's a one shot and that's the run over. And that's it, Rayquaza has done it. With a final time of two hours, 11 minutes, and 41 seconds, it's right up there with the game's elite, but unfortunately, you might have noticed, it did not beat Groudon. It was actually off by a couple of minutes. It's a little bit disheartening. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, because I felt like I put a lot into this run, and I really tried to refine it, and it felt really good to play. It felt like you were just cutting out every single thing that you could, but at the end of the day, unless you're one-shotting everything or unless you have like that immense power that things like earth power and precipice blades gave you really early with Groudon it's really hard to keep pace you can have the best base stats in the world and eventually we're gonna see this when we get to like the dragon knight run you can have the best stats in the world you can have the highest attack in the game but if you just don't have anything to really use it with or if you do have stuff to use it with they don't come until later in the game it makes it really hard to keep pace with these top runs now when we look at other runs you can only only pretty much point to Groudon and Alakazam. Those are the only two runs better than this. So if you think about it that way, there's no point in being down on this run because at the end of the day, Rayquaza is one of the elite. It's going to be one of the best Pokemon we probably ever do. I just thought maybe it could like be that Pokemon that beats Alakazam, but Alakazam being in that faster leveling groups is really hard. And when you take into account Groudon starting with those really strong moves, learning that early earth power, it's just really hard to overcome. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. This was a fun one. I'm not ready to have a cross-generation tier list just yet. Eventually we will, but most people don't even make it this far into the video anyway. But I'd like to say a special shout out to my channel members. I appreciate the support you guys give me. And if you're still hearing my voice right now, you are absolutely amazing. You are the best kind of viewer. If you're not subscribed, you should be because I need people like you that watch every single bit of the video and you're interested, you're engaged with me. But that's pretty much all I got. Uh, at this point, I need to work on some regular runs and then in a few weeks, something like that, I'm going to get that Iron Thorns video out for you. And if you guys vote for Kyogre, which I'm sure you probably will, that's probably not going to happen until after the summer because I pretty much want to go pretty heavy into the Gen 7 stuff. But nothing's finalized just yet. I don't want to babble. Like always, I stopped using a script a while ago, so I just kind of say stuff off the top of my head. And this video, the footage messed up a couple of times, so this is like an extra Rayquaza run where I've already like written down a bunch of stuff that was obsolete and I think I'm going to stop babbling now. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.